welcome everyone to the session advanced automation with apm handling biometrics and qr scanning by vabo shukla and sunil makor we are glad vabo and sunil can join us today without further uh, delay over to you vabo and sunil thanks uh, ritul uh, for this call welcome hello everyone so here uh, with me my colleague sunil is also here so today here we are presenting the one topic interesting topic as you know in automation world uh, as the technologies are evolving we are getting a uh, different difference uh, as tech uh, is tag in the automations and while uh, in the application side also so here we are covering two scenarios that is handling biometric and uh, qr code with automation so here are some uh, just a small intro about myself and my colleague as uh, we are uh, I myself has seven years experience in the testing domains, creating different utilities and working on the open source technologies. And with me, Sunil is also here. Sunil, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good, good evening. Good afternoon. Whoever joined from different parts of the world. So uh, my name is Sunil and I have around 10 plus years of experience in software testings. Specialized in automation testing and developing various automation utilities, utilities uh, with some open source technologies and, and some licensed technologies. And I'm also passionate about the enhancing software quality through innovative automation techniques and agile methods. So that's uh, pretty about me. Thanks, Bebo. And here we have also mentioned our LinkedIn profile. You can reach out to us and uh... We are happy to uh, connect with different people. So, not... so here we have kept uh, agenda. So the agenda we uh, cover the uh, demo also, and we will cover first PPT and we'll cover the real time uh, demo with both the scenarios. So here the agenda is like we will cover the what is biometric and QR code in automation, what is the problem statement, and how we are evolving, what the solutions we came up with this. And we will cover the uh, open, uh, like we will cover the testing on the real devices. And here the third is and is like, what is the benefits of automating QR code and barcode introduction to biometric authentication and problem statement. So the whole uh, session is covered in two parts. First, we will cover the QR code by the Sunil, my colleague. And uh, next is the biometric, which we will cover. And uh, if you have any Q&A, you can uh, like, uh, Put on the QA and on the chat, we will cover at the end of the session also. And we also on that, like we have the whole table book also. You can reach out after the session. We, me and Sunil will be there for the 20 minutes. So over to you, Sunil. So as Bevo rightly mentioned, so we will uh, cover this uh, session in two parts. First, uh, we'll discuss about the QR code, how we can uh, automate the QR code using APM and with some uh, open source technology and also uh, with some uh, cloud-based technology. So uh, first part uh, will cover by me and then second part, uh, it's about the biometrics. So Beva will cover that, how we can automate the biometrics uh, using both open source and cloud-based solutions. So uh, the QR code and barcode overview. So QR code has rapidly grown post pandemic to avoid these uh, physical contact and different sectors and different domains uh, different domains so so the qr code and barcodes are the integral part of uh, various uh, domains like logistics healthcare and payments and it is widely used industries in to seek more efficient and secure and scalable solution for identification tracking and uh, consumer engagement so mostly the qr code uh, solutions and the barcode solution used by these uh, manufacturing companies to get their product details to by scanning the, the QR code images and barcode images. So we'll discuss how we can uh, automate these QR code and barcode uh, using some uh, open source and cloud-based solution. So here uh, we have uh, implemented both uh, open source and uh, cloud-based solution to solve this uh, problem, like how we can automate these QR code and barcode images. So uh, while we talk about this uh, automation, it's a bit challenging part uh, because uh, it's not a normal way to uh, automate any uh, uh, QR code or barcode because it comes with a encrypted format, right? So uh, to uh, scan those QR code and barcode, 
uh, first there could be a uh, multiple scenario like one is you have the direct images and through some uh, solutions or through some plugins and it can be open source it can be cloud based solution through this we can directly scan those images and get the details and fetch the details from the from that uh, images and second scenario could be like you have some uh, data in form of uh, any kind of like product id or some parts number it can be some uh, other data like uh, invent for the details product for the inventory management right so to get that data in barcode format then scan those images to verify the data is um, properly scanning or not so that kind of scenario also we can uh, automate using apm and open source solutions so barcode and qr code scanning has become a crucial requirement as i have mentioned and to automate this process can be a challenging part so what could be the different challenges while automating this uh, qr code and barcode so first one is the real device dependency so to scan the uh, QR code and barcode, we always need a real device and the images should be in a good format and form. It should be properly visualized to scan the images and the lighting of the images and the format of the images should be in proper way, right? So first one is the real device dependency because uh, it is a bit difficult to scan the uh, QR code using emulator and simulator. So real device helps in more efficient way to scan those uh, QR code and barcode. And secondly, uh, the different lighting and angles and resolution of the mobile cameras. So uh, if the uh, QR code and the camera um, is not in a good uh, setup, like the lighting is not proper and the angle of the images and the camera angle is not uh, properly set up, then uh, it's little too difficult to scan the emoji images. So this could be one uh, problems or challenges for uh, automating the QR code and barcode. And the third one is the application point of view. So there could be one scenario like you have one application where there is a functionality to scan the uh, barcode and QR code, but, but you don't have any functionality to upload the QR code and barcode images in that application. So how we can automate those kind of applications to scan, to get the scan of the QR code and barcode. So uh, there could be multiple ways. So if there is no functionality to upload the QR code and barcode, we can directly inject the images into that uh, scanning functionality, right? So this also uh, one of the limitations and uh, blockage while scanning any QR code and barcode in automation. So these are the three major challenges which uh, generally uh, we do face in automating the QR code and barcode. So as I have mentioned uh, that we have implemented or we have tried two approach one is the open source approach and another one is the cloud based approach to solve this problem so first one is with the help of some image processing libraries so uh, for the demonstration purpose we have used uh, the apm with java and we have used uh, one of the java libraries to get the uh, qr code and to generate the qr code dynamically and in the second part, <clears throat> we are uploading, but we'll try to upload those images uh, in a real device. So the first one is the open source library that we'll use in the demonstration part. And in the second uh, one is like cloud-based APIs. So for this demo, we have used the image injection functionality of the Lambda test. So uh, which helps us to inject these uh, different uh, type of QR code and barcodes into the uh, cloud devices on different uh, cloud devices and different operating systems. So uh, 
when we talks about the cloud based solution there could be uh, multiple ways uh, the first one is that we have tried using this lambda test image injection and also there are some apis available the google image api and some other apis which also helps to uh, read this qr code dynamic, dynamically in uh, that we can use in any cloud devices and real devices so uh, let me open my source code uh, where we have tried using both of the solution to generate the qr code dynamically and scan those qr code uh, into the real devices so hope my uh, intellij id is visible so to scan the qr code so let me show you how we have solved this problem the so first will generate one qr code so we can generate any qr code in the form of text from any text from any numbers or anything right so we will first generate one qr code from some of the text and then we'll try to upload those qr code into the real device and scan those images so here we have implemented through this uh, lambda test so as the framework is based on the apm so we need to set up the few uh, details like the device name the platform where we want to automate this uh, qr code then in for the demonstration purpose i have used the platform as android and i have set one uh, pixel 9 pro devices this which is having this android version 14 and as I have already shown in the uh, slides that we are using this cloud base and the open source. So for the cloud base, we are using this one capability of Lambda test that is enable image injection part. So we need to set this uh, capability as true in our desired capabilities. Then uh, to use the Lambda test, uh, we need some access key and the credential that I have already set in this uh, setup classes. And to scan, the uh, qr code and generate the qr code dy dynamically so i have used this qr gen uh, maven dependency to generate this uh, qr code dynamically and there are multiple uh, uh, dependency that in java available in the uh, open in the internet that we can use based on our requirement and based on our feasibility so for this demonstration purpose, I have used this uh, QR gen library, which is one open source. And to test this QR code and inject the images uh, into the real devices, we are using this image injection functionality of the Lambda test. Okay, so this, uh, this is about this setup classes where we have uh, set up these, um, some of the basic details and for generating the QR code, I have used this Java byte area output stream where I am giving this text to generate the QR code dynamically uh, in the some in some format. So we can uh, format these images uh, with some size. So for this image, I have provided this uh, size one zero one two, and I am process while processing this image, we have to convert into some uh, jpg or image form right jpg format or png format we can uh, convert it to any format so for uh, this demonstration i have converted this uh, qr code which is uh, which will generate dynamically in the png format then we can write this qr code uh, to any file output stream so this is the uh, line where we can uh, write this image to uh, stream memory and after uh, setting these basic details where you want to test the uh, QR code functionality and, and how we generate this QR code, then we have one post API which helps to generate uh, the image form in the URL and that URL we have to execute where we want to scan these images. So this is one post API provided by the Lambda test only where we are passing that QR code image and uh, 
pushing it into one URL form, right? So this is the method where uh, I have written and it will generate this QR code dynamically and it will pass this QR code uh, into that URL form. So to use that uh, URL and to use that uh, QR code, so I have used my company's uh, homepage. The site is www.tothenew.com. So uh, when I provide this uh, uh, to the new sites, it will convert this text into QR code format here. So let me delete all the previously generated QR code so that we can observe that it will generate one new one. So let me try to run this code and generate the QR code. And to test this uh, generated QR code, I have written one test script where we are using one demo app. So it will log into the demo app and there is a functionality to uh, scan that uh, generated QR code. So we'll test, it, test this out. So let me run this script first. So the script has started running. Let me open this lambda test URL. So now we can see here one test has been triggered in the name of QR code test Android. And it has opened one uh, Google Pixel device, device that I have passed in the setup class. So first it takes some uh, seconds to load the device and it has started the application and it will click on the QR code scan and it will scan the generated QR code and it will pass some details and it will also verify the details that we have passed. Okay, so the test, and, test has run successfully and you can see that uh, while process this command first is had generated one uh, QR code. So we can see here that this PNG file. So let me open one though. It has generated in this form and this PNG file has been pushed through this Lambda, Lambda test imaging injection functionality. And it has scanned this uh, image with the help of this QR uh, code scanner. So we can play this video and see how this execution has been performed. So first is it has logged into the application, then it has clicked on the menu icon and it will click on the QR code scanner. And here it is processing the QR code to scan. So after scanning, uh, I have uh, validated some of the uh, images and text from this URL. And on the basis of that logic, it is getting passed or failed. So this is how we can uh, automate any QR code and barcode through these open source technology and cloud-based solutions. So let me go back to the slide. So what is the benefits uh, while automating any QR code and barcode through this automation solution? So it has, it, first one is that it is increasing the accuracy uh, while automating any uh, problem statement, be it QR code or any other problem. So uh, by default, it also increase the accuracy. Then the efficiency while automating any uh, QR code and the repetitive tasks. So it by default uh, increase the efficiency, the reusability, consistency, and the cross-platform testing. So cross-platform testing basically comes into the picture whenever you leverage any cloud-based solution, be it Lambda test, browser text, or any other cloud solution. Also, uh, it reduces the manual effort. So while automating any manual tasks, so by default, it reduces the manual effort. And the scalability form, then automation allows you to scale up the number of QR code and barcode tested without needing more resources. So while automating the solution, it also solves these manual efforts and 
also it's increase the scalability and with this help of this uh, solution we can uh, scan any number of qr code and any kind of barcode formats be it upc en or any form and yeah that's about this uh, uh, part and i hope uh, you guys have better understand how we can automate these uh, qr code and barcode using the open source and cloud based solutions so that's pretty about this part so the next part beba will uh, explain how we can automate the biometrics using the same cloud based and open source solutions so thank you so beba you want to take this from here yeah, yeah. thanks neil i hope everyone now gets a idea like uh, the two scenarios which we say like uh, when we uh, do like uh, if i remember a couple of years ago uh, we when we say the biometric automation or the qr code automation test cases we case uh, we say not applicable generally we say not applicable for the automation but now i think most of you got uh, some idea like how we can automate uh, those scenarios and we can forget to say not applicable right so now coming to the second part as in the first part we see uh, saw the like how we can automate the qr code and barcode now coming to the auto, uh, like authentication part in the uh, mobile applications the biometric is a very essential uh, essential part of uh, now the coming uh, uh, the deployment of the any applications so mobile applications mostly relies on the biometric authentication it can be a fingerprint facial and it can be also a voice for security for convenience of most of the users so why it's a very essential part of the application because it ensures the reliability also and um, functionality of these biometric is a critical for maintaining the user trust and security mostly if you talk about the banking applications either uh, in the us india or anywhere the banking application is more secure and biometric authentication is the most secure other than the otp we have the otp also we have the pin password also if we take any if we take just take example of real world when we uh, have a mobile uh, our uh, physical mobile there's also a feature of biometric authentication right and we can uh, face recognition is also there voice recognition is also there so, and now in when we are doing the automation there are multiple applications every month i think most of the you have faced like in most of the when you are working on the mobile application we have seen like uh, there's a feature of biometric authentication so after uh, i am sure like uh, not the 100 percent but 70 percent we'll get the idea like how we can automate those scenarios and we have to say we have to forget not applicable words in this type of scenarios so in this also the manual testing is labor in intensive can be caused to human errors but we can do so we'll cover the both the scenarios how we can uh, do the testing of biometric authentication on the real device and on the <clears throat> emulators also so both of the scenarios we have covered here and we'll give it will give the like when we uh, when we are doing the emulators it cannot be give the diverse range of devices so we are chosen we are using here the lambda test library as in the qr code also we are using the lambda test injection here we are using the biometric api of the lambda test only for the real devices and we have like also explored the uh, apm uh, adb commands for the emulator also and uh, currently, if you talk about there's a lack of automated solutions, how we can automate those scenarios in the mobile application. Now, coming to the objective of this, we will cover uh, objectives to develop the automated validation scenarios for the biometric authentication mobile applications. And the solution is like we are utilizing the ADB commands of the APM and the cloud solutions. So here is the just, uh, I have, Pick one uh, snapshot like how the biometric sensor works. So you can see like is the sampling process. It will extract when we are doing, uh, we have the physical device. For example, one user is there. When we are uh, doing first time, it will uh, just take example of biometric. We have to put our finger and uh, the fingerprint will store in the database of the mobile only. So here we will cover the not a real when we are doing uh, the real type of biometric. Here we will test the functionality of the application which has the biometric, right? So there is a huge difference when we say the testing of biometric authentication in the real device with the real example. Here we will test <clears throat> how to test those functionality which has the application on the biometric authentication 
So this is the internal working how biometric works. There's a biometric sensors. After that, we have the sampling process. It will extract the feature of the biometric which we have saved. It will generate the template generator and matching unit is there. When we log in, it will match like uh, the current biometric is match or not. And from the it will the matching unit will come from the stored database because uh, all the biometric which we are putting on the devices, it will be stored in the database of the mobile only. And on the basis of matching unit, it will take the decision module like uh, biometric authentication got pass or fail. So in the first uh, solutions, we will cover the real device testing and in the second solution, we'll cover the ADB commands. Here we have used, uh, if we talk about uh, the tech stack, uh, which we have used here, we are using the APM2. We are using the Java as the binding language. For uh, real device testing, we have used the Lambda test as a cloud provider. And for the emulators and simulators, we are using the ADB command, which is oh, again, uh, we, uh, everyone can get. So just to give an overview, like uh, we have the includes biometric on the real devices and uh, we can do the biometric authentication on iOS and Android also. In the both devices, there's no limitation on the, like we can do the biometric on the iOS only or the Android also. As I beginning, I told, we can do the biometric on the emulators also. If uh, we don't have the solutions of the cloud or we doesn't have the, uh, any real device testing uh, devices, physical real devices, we can uh, test those scenarios also on our emulators and simulators. So the, these solutions give the enhanced accuracy of testing biometric features in applications, ensuring optimal user uh, experience, and we can test across multiple devices also and uh, give wide range of the devices which are applicable on the cloud provider and there's no limitation like we are using the lambda test we can go with any of the cloud solutions mostly all the cloud solutions uh, there's a, a biometric apis they are providing which we can use there's no like uh, we don't have any uh, limitation like we have to use uh, any such of the cloud provider tools so here while doing the biometric first, we have to make uh, our device enable like uh, the condition should be there. Like if you go to the settings of the mobile, we have the enable biometric features and we have to pass the capabilities. And here we are using the, uh, like uh, as I told, uh, we are using the Lambda test hook, okay? So we'll uh, see the demo also of this also. So the limitation is like uh, we cannot do the, uh, just it's a small note, like we cannot perform the biometric authentication below the uh, Android devices who has uh, OS version is uh, less than 11 and uh, we'll cover this uh, in the things and uh, solutions uh, to, as I told, like we have used the emulators also for this ADB commands. As you know, like we have some, uh, touch id and ios simulators on the touch sensors of adb commands to validate those scenarios we have to pass the some commands over here so now coming to the let me share my IntelliJ where we can show the demo of this part how we are utilizing both the solutions so first we will cover the example of cloud provider So before starting, like what are the configurations which we required? Like, uh, as I told, we are using the APM2 and we are using the test as a test ng framework and uh, Lambda test as a cloud provider. So we have to use the one, uh, we have to use the one uh, tunnel binary of the Lambda test. Uh, we have to export in our pom.xml as I'm using the Maven project. So we have to put the dependencies and rest other dependencies are related to Java APM test ng. Okay, now coming to the code part, as uh, we are working on the real devices and we are integrating, so we need, we are passing the grid URL of the Lambda test, we are passing the username, access key, and uh, these are the code which uh, we are working. So here are the set driver method, where we are uh, configuring our Lambda test with the username and password. We are pass working on the, as I told, we uh, there's no limitation. We can work on the Android and iOS devices. So we are configuring the both the devices and we are passing the capabilities of both the devices. Here we are cap setting the capabilities as uh, we have to set some capabilities. We are passing the build name, platform name, uh, device name on which particular devices we need to execute our test cases of what is, we are passing our app URL. We are passing, and we, as I told, we have, if we are working on the real devices, we have to uh, set enable biometric authentication as a true. 
in our capability so it uh, the devices should be enabled for the biometric by default it is false so we have to set those capabilities before executing our test now when we are uh, running the test we have to pass the platform name if we are working uh, test those scenarios on the android or ios we have put the condition of both and if we are running on ios this is the code for the ios and uh, as you uh, see like in the line number of 72 uh, we are execute we are using the biometric injection apis of the lambda test and here is the code of android uh, we are just passing some elements when we are clicking and we again we are using the uh, injection apis of the lambda test for making true and we there are two scenarios either biometric authentication will pass or fail so we will test both the scenarios what we will occur when the when we are passing biometric authentication as a true and when we are passing biometric authentication as a false so here we are passing first we will show the positive scenarios how we are making the biometric authentication as a pass to test those scenarios and we are passing the devices on android so we'll see the real time example on android we are passing the device name moto g stylus 5z platform number is 12 as we have to use the platform uh, version above 11 below 11 it will not work so now uh, we will see the real time execution and the execution will be happened on the lambda test so let me switch to the lambda test url let me refresh So the execution is started. You can see uh, the fingerprint POC, which we are passing as a build name. Build name is coming from the code itself. And we can see this is the real devices. And we are passing the devices, Moto G, Stylus G, 5G, uh, and the Android version is 12. So it's taking uh, some time to uh, fetching because the live execution is happening. You, we can see the live execution over here. All the logs is coming here. We are see the choose biometric selection. We are, as we have passed biometric authentication true, so it is a log in the application. And in the console logs also, we can see like uh, just let me scroll it up. Uh, you can see like uh, it's created, and we have uh, put the condition true and biometric authentication. We are switching the biometric authentication as a true. And after that, it's login the application. So let me again just plan out a video because it's fast. So it's enabling the execution. You can see, as I told, we have to enable the fingerprint on our devices. It's either on the real devices or the uh, working on the emulators. And after that, it's login. So this is the positive scenarios which we cover when we are passing uh, the condition as the true. Now to coming to the uh, negative scenarios here, we will put it fail and to cover those scenarios like the biometric of this particular app is working or not with the negative scenarios we will again uh, execute this uh, test case on the lambda test only so now i have put the negative scenarios to test like my app should not be login when i am passing the invalid uh, biometric And it's working on the real device, so it's taking time to get or uh, set up the device on the Lambda test account. We can again see like uh, we have used the same device, Moto G. We can the same pal. We can do the on iOS also. So you can see like we have created a new sessions and uh, we have uh, put uh, now here the test case will fail because we are not passing the correct authentication. So in the logs also. You, we can see, you can see we have passed so just it's executing i think yeah so you can see after when we are putting uh when we uh click on that like we have enabled the biometric on this particular moto g after that we are passing invalid biometric you can see in the console also lambda test biometric injection fail after that it is not able to log in because we are passing the negative scenarios and on the console also you can see biometric authentication field so we here we have seen like how the biometric feature can be tested using the real devices okay now coming to the second part like uh, adb things 
so this is the thing which we have configured for our emulators uh, will uh, showcase like how we can do the configurations on emulator as now we are uh, passing the uh, working on the our emulator so we are passing the capabilities our device name is emulator triple five four we are uh, giving the platform versions 15 and platform name is android as we are working on the android as of now and we are passing the automation name as the UI Automator 2 for the Android. And if you are working on the iOS, we are we have to pass the XUI test or the Express also. And we are passing the capabilities over uh, the APK path. In the case of iOS, we have to pass the path of our IPA file. As we are work, uh, we're executing these uh, ADB commands for the authentication on our uh, emulator, so we have to pass our local APM server that is again 127.0.1.4723. And we are writing same scripts, the APK is same, just we have to pass the ATP commands. If we want to pass uh, the positive scenarios, we have to pass the uh, fingerprint one. And we have to test if the negative scenarios of any application. There is no foundation. If you have any application, we have to pass the zero for the negative scenarios if you want to uh, authenticate by fingers. In the same manner, uh, currently we have shown the things for the Android. Same manner we can do the for iOS also. Now coming to again, like we have seen the both the scenarios. Uh, so uh, like we have passed the same we have enabled like we are enabling the biometric on our uh, physical emulators we are passing those and like we have the solutions also as i told in the uh, beginning like during validation we have to pass the touch id either it's one or the zero so now uh, both the cases have the lim uh, like uh, outcome is now we have seen like biometric of any application then for the testing we have to bypass if we are working in the some if you talk about like a couple of years ago when we are doing desktop testing we have to bypass that biometric features now we can do the automation using any and we have to test end to end the testing so these are the things which we can uh, see like uh, limitations and uh, outcomes of the uh, lambda test and here we have seen like uh, what is the uh, validation and uh, points the limitation of the ADB commands like we are restricted to the emulators and simulators cannot be applied to real devices. The compatibility of the simulators with touch ID support must be verified because we have to enable the devices. And these are the not actual devices. And if you are testing on the range of uh, extensive devices or the limitation of the posing challenges, we will cover uh, mobile devices manufacturers also. So let me show the negative scenarios. You can see like uh, when we covered those scenarios, it is not able to log in. As I told, uh, we have to enable the fingerprint. And it will not able to log in. You can see in the first case, we are able to log in with the positive scenarios. In the second case, we are not able to log in because we are passing the invalid uh, scenarios uh, like we have don't able to log in. Yep. So now uh, we have five minutes time. If uh, any uh, like uh, Q and A or the, any doubts any has, uh, we can that. Yep. Uh, thanks, Webo and Sunil, for sharing your experience. I guess I can see a couple of questions in the Q and A section. I will read out them for you and Webo and Sunil, you can take up the answers. So we have an uh, anonymous question, which is how is there any approach to automate QR ports when it comes to 2FA login? Uh, Sunil, you will take or? Yeah, using two-factor authentication, uh, it would be a bit tricky. So uh, it depends on your application, how the two-factor two authentication has been configured. And if it is feasible in automation, then we can automate using the same approach that I have shown in the demo. Got uh, it. Second question is how we are assuring that it has scanned the correct QR only before opening any redirection URL or any details. So uh, if you have noticed in my demonstration part that there is only one QR code was there. And we are ensuring that whatever the QR code is, it is generating by the code dynamically. It is picking the descent one and we have also put some validation 
in the code itself that whether you have uh, scanned the, uh, the right QR code or not. That kind of validation we can put in the code and it is there in my demonstration code part. Got it. So the next question is, how is the encoded to us sent to the camera application? So uh, as I have shown in the demo, so there are uh, two solutions that I have already shown the open source using this open source solution. Also, we can push any QR code or inject the QR code into the real devices. So uh, that can be done using some uh, Jing library or the QR gen library. Also, we can use some third party application to inject that application into the QR scan part. And also we can use some cloud solution like Lambda test image injection. Got it. So I have seen a lot of questions in the, which are same in the chat was, can you share the GitHub repo for the same so that people can explore the same? Uh, yeah, sure. So we'll upload this deck also and we'll ex uh, upload the code on the open Git and everyone can access. Like by UD, we'll upload the deck also and the code which uh, sold by me and uh, Sunil. So you can explore. And we have mentioned the LinkedIn, uh, both of the IDs. So as you know, like we are working on, uh, me and Sunil is working on the open source and many utilities we have created. And we are happy to connect with anyone if you are uh, interested to know more about on the automation utilities and how we can explore or we how we can handle this type of challenges. Got it. So there are others who are also wanted, uh, needing what is the dependencies that you are using uh, on the real devices. So I guess QR gen is the dependency which you have used, Sunil? Yes, yes, yes right, yeah. right. Okay. So uh, Matthews has questions. Sunil, can you share the... Uh, project repository. So I guess it will be same on the GitHub, which you can get. Yes. And Govind has a question. Is there any possibility to save dynamically generated QR uh, code in the device uh, and while scanning inject it? Yeah, we can do that. I uh, mean, it totally depends how we want to uh, approach this uh, QR code functionality, right? So it can be uh, saved within your uh, source or the code repository. You can also, if you want to push that QR code into the device and from there you want to push that into that QR code functionality that, that can be also done in both Android and iOS. Got it. Using so, some file commands. Yeah. Iptisam has question, do these solutions work on latest APM Java client? Yes, yes, it does work. And uh, basically for this demo purpose, we have used this latest uh, Java level. APM right. Right. right, we are using the APM2 only for the QR code and for the biometrics. So it will work on the APM1 also. There's no limitation or no boundary for any of the we can like. Got it. Sushmita has two questions. One is, does browser stack also support this? Also, biometric uh, APIs are available in browser stack also, like the same? Uh, yes. Yeah. Like, as I told, like, there's no limitation with the Lambda, like we have used uh, as we are working uh, on the Lambda test. So we have showed a demo with the Lambda test uh, and other cloud uh, solutions also browser stack and source lab provide uh, uh, like biometric and uh, uh, injection APIs for it. There's Got no it. limitation on any of that. Too. So Iptisab has another question. Uh, did you face any shortcoming or limitation while automating the QR code or biometric via cloud providers? Uh, no such limitations and challenges you can uh, face like uh, if the QR code image is not in a right format, then in that case, you may uh, face challenging challenges to scan those kind of QR code if it is format is not in the right way. But in terms of the uh, functionality part, uh, no such uh, challenges we have faced so far. Got it. And the next question is, how do you test for biometric authentication on iOS simulator or even devices? ADB is yeah. only available for Android, right? Yeah, so we have explored, uh, till now we explored the cloud pro provider for the iOS because of uh, this limitation with the, like as we have the ADB commands only for the Android. So we are exploring more on the, how we can test the, uh, like for iOS on the emulators and simulators as we don't have the ADB commands for it. Got it. I guess we have a couple of more questions, but we can take it on the Hangout. So as we are over the time. So yeah, thanks Weber and Sunil for sharing your experience with us today. Thanks, thanks everyone. everyone. Thanks, Atul. Thanks, Atul.